Now, really quickly for this one, we're going to go from ZBrush straight into Marmoset. There's some definite limitations there, and I'm going to call those out in this video, but if you just need a quick Marmoset look dev render, uh, this isn't bad. One thing we are going to do, if I take my Z plugin and put it over here and we go to ZBrush Compositor, is I'm going to switch this from RGB over here to BPR. Essentially, what it's going to send over is this. If I hit BPR render, you're going to see it's going to give us this kind of shaded look. And in fact, we could even do a preview. If we send over preview right now, I would essentially send over what you see here, which is we have, uh, if I take this material and drag over here, we have metal MAH shiny right here. There's the uh, matte material MAH shiny painted on here. We have basic material painted on here. I put a little bit of texture, uh, just stamp some texture onto that back to make it look like wood. And the reason I'm doing that is if I was to send over just this RGB pass, it's going to kill all my material properties and send over just the color. Now, if you're gonna be applying a material like we've been doing previously, it's not a big deal. However, in this first pass of Marmoset, it's only going to allow us one material. Now, there is way cooler stuff we can do in Marmoset 4 as far as texturing is concerned. This is just one method to go from ZBrush to Marmoset with one material, do a little bit of look dev work, but you are gonna to have to put in a little bit of upfront work. And if you've already done that, if you already have something poly painted, and it looks pretty much the way you want, this is a good alternative, even though you're going to have a little bit of more limitations when you get into Marmoset. So we'll go into ZBrush Compositor. We've already made a square document here, so all the previous videos, all the pre-work you put in has already been done. We have RGB, turn to preview, and then now we're going to go over here and uh, create our tool bag composite. Now you, here's where you can also change the specular gloss to metal roughness. I'll go ahead and send over specular gloss because I can show you how to change it to metal roughness just in case you need to, but we'll go ahead and say create tool back composite. And if it ever comes in this uh, weird like this, you can just switch your main camera over here to front and that'll capture that front camera. However, this is just something for later. If you ever get into like a missive and bloom, I'll, I think some of that stuff only really works with a perspective camera. So in that case, I'm gonna go back here to camera's main camera Go ahead and select the main camera, switch this to orthographic, go in here to transform and just zero out uh, your rotations. That'll essentially make this an orthographic camera with main camera functionality. So here we go. We have our object in Marmoset. I'm actually in the texture window. We're going to get into texturing later. I'm going to go back over here to classic for now. Uh, if you have a camera kind of sitting in your way, just hit control U. That'll clear all your interface icons out of the way. And immediately let's go in here to sky. I'm going to choose something that's not so drab. So I'm going to go in here to presets. Here's a new Marmoset library here. I'm just going to dock this library right down here at the bottom. You can even open this up and say, you know, let's go to, no, again, something a little more, more sunny here. We'll do a, uh, this morning one. If you have one that has a little cloud icon, all you have to do is double click it to load it, let it spend for a little bit and then double click it again. And that'll give you that image to a uh, light with. Let's go ahead and set a child uh, light in here and then go down to that skylight that child light we just made and crank up that brightness a little bit so now you may notice that um, the legs look a little bit translucent and we're getting a little bit of artifacting on here one thing to remember is under the render you can also turn on ray tracing uh, to give you a little bit more quality but again you're getting that artifacting along uh, the edge here and if I rotate my camera just a bit you're gonna see we're getting a pretty nasty um, result from our displacement map, but we can fix that. So go over here to your plane, unlock it, select the plane, go over here to subdivide and just crank up subdivision levels to like three or four. And that should uh, really even that transition out. Now we got to go back to our main camera and again, just zero out our rotations here. So we're looking straight at it. There we go. So now we're getting a much uh, cleaner result. So again, if we go back up to the render cog here, we can, you know, you can use raster or just turn on ray tracing. And again, we're getting a little bit of a soft touch through here. And where that's coming in is by default, this is going to set up your emissive map right here in your emission and your emission It's going to put your thickness texture into the emissive map. So if you wanted to make like a, something like Jade or something, you can go in here and switch this to like a green emissive and it'll kind of, or, you know, if it's subsurface scattering, you'd fake it, put in kind of a ruddy red texture. But since these are metal legs, I don't really need this. So we'll just go ahead and uh, uncheck that for now. We can use that to our advantage later, uh, but this particular instance, we don't really need it. Now you're gonna notice we only have one material applied to this object. So if we go over here to our gloss and specular map, and this is where I was saying, oh, whoops, if you didn't wanna do a gloss map and a specular map, you could change this gloss to roughness and the specular to metalness. And now you're using the metal roughness workflow. 
Uh, it's metal, the metalness is set to one if you turn that down to zero. So that one now looks like your wood is kind of metallic. Let's go ahead and take that metalness down to zero. These arms still look like they're metal, and that's why when we sent over our, our albedo map, load this up so you can see it, our albedo is actually that baked in ZBrush look. So this is what it's using for the color. So we kind of baked in that metal look and that wood look from ZBrush. And the reason we had to do that is we've only got one material assigned to this. And again, in the next video, we're going to go over how to use Marmoset to assign multiple layered materials in their new uh, texturing workflow, which is really, really neat. So essentially, we can just do painter functionality in Marmoset now. But if you're just going to send one thing over, this is probably the best way to do it to get different material properties kind of looking right. And then you can go over here to your roughness and you can do an overall roughness change. But it's, again, it's going to affect both the wood and the metal. We'll take our diffuse cavity down. I don't think our specular cavity is going to be doing much in this particular case, but at least you can still use the Marmoset render and lighting system to get the look you want. You can go back in here to your main camera. We can scroll down. We can add some post effects. Like if you want to go ahead and sharpen this image up, we can add some bloom, add a vignette. You can even go in here to presets and kind of swap these things out to get a particular look and then go down here and then dial in exactly what you're looking for. When you're ready to render, we can go over here back to our render cog. If we scroll all the way down, these are our, our render settings now. They were in a different place in the previous version of the tool bag. So we have ray tracing turned on. If you just want to use the raster, just turn that off. We'll go ahead and keep that on for now. We'll go down here. If you want to render this with the background, you can or you can turn on transparency. We're gonna render out a PNG, change your resolution if you want to. We'll just throw this right on our desktop. We'll go ahead and hit render image. And here we go. So that's some quick Marmoset one material look dev. In the next video, we're gonna go over how to use the new texturing system uh, to do layered material workflows like Substance Painter to really neat effect.